Well, I think one of the the most well recognized <coughs> policies to increase um, to increase uh, participation and diminish uh, refuse generation is pay as you throw systems. That those have been proven out over and over again throughout North America to be very effective very quickly because um, it is immediately um, apparent to the homeowner that it's in their interest to um, recycle as much as possible and, and um, reduce what they're putting out at the curb either through recycling or if they choose to through reduced consumption. So that, that's a very clear winner. Um, another very clear winner are bottle bills. They have very high rates of um, of redemption and, and recovery, especially when you, you bump the deposit up to 10 cents instead of 5 cents. So those are two really well-proven policies, I, I would think, that um, for which there's lots and lots of evidence. And when you spoke before about um, the different frameworks that cities might use um, in, in their different goals in having a curbside recycling program, how would those two things fit in with some of those frameworks? So if a city were to adopt those kinds of strategies, what framework would they be operating inside of? Does that make sense? Well, th they certainly would be, and I mean, Brian, correct me if, if, if I'm wrong, but I would think that that type of framework would certainly lead to, to the economies of scale that you need for a recycling system to be strong and viable, right? You need it, the more material that you're collecting on a consistent basis, um, the the more robust your your whole program economics will be. Um, so it would definitely fit in with a uh, a paradigm in which the economics of the recycling program and uh, and hopefully in the long term, longer term, the economics of the the residual disposal program would be optimized. Susan makes some good points about the uh, pay-as-you-throw, the financial incentives, and I think those are clearly good ways to go about it. And somehow you need to find a way, whether it's a, a volume system or a weight system that directly goes to the homeowner, that they can see that and realize that. Those are, are very good systems. One of my concerns with the deposit systems, which have been very effective where they work, those places that don't have those seem to have very strong opposition <clears throat> and I think we can burn a lot of effort to make that happen and it, it may not be a low-hanging fruit even though it's effective when it does happen and municipalities have a lot less power to be effective in those I love the idea the concept I think it may be very difficult some of the things I'm aware of is when you go to a, a larger bin for your recyclables such as a wheeled cart versus the small set on the ground bin uh, that increases cycling rates. Maybe it's just the ease of it, the large capacity of it. Those increase rates. When you're able to link your recycling day with garbage day, that's helpful. If you have uh, recycling collection every other week, but garbage collection every week, there's some confusion there. When is recycling day? Matching those up can, can really help uh, recycling rates as well. It may increase some cost, but it does uh, improve those rates. Yeah, we found that the cart and the single stream is is definitely one of the biggest factors increasing rates and keeping them up. I think um, nobody's mentioned it yet, but I think it's pretty obvious, um, at least to me it's obvious, I, you know, mandated uh, recycling, um, making it mandatory. It does work. There's usually a um, D depending on the culture of your municipality or, or location, there could be a lot of resistance to it, but nonetheless, I think it's pretty effective when there is a mandatory program or mandated law in place. 